my top three recommendations for data center operators to achieve sustainability are number one, don't waste your money on renewable energy credits. I think it doesn't really add any value to the long-term conversation. Um, in fact, um, renewable energy credits at the moment are preventing us from hitting the, the goal that we've set ourselves uh, in the world in terms of uh, reducing our carbon footprint. Number two is um, optimize your equipment for IT. So IT equipment could be condensed. Um, I think that it can also be optimized for workloads. And number three is explore new physical infrastructure um, technologies. There's new cooling technologies, there's new power technologies, there's new battery chemistries. So experiment so that you can become more efficient, use less power, and as a result, you'll be more sustainable, but also save money which is kind of important. AI is and will play a crucial role in data centers' uh, operational improvements, starting with energy efficiency, um, helping with analyzing real-time data, uh, optimizing uh, processes, um, predictive ma maintenance, uh, security. Um, but most of all, I think it's going to help with a big challenge that data centers are facing now, uh, which is skill gap. Uh, we can see already uh, drones and robots helping with uh, monitoring and maintenance. And another thing is sustainability. Um, AI will, uh, will, will be a, a helpful, big help to data centers um, to um, meet their uh, sustainability goals. And the deadlines are approaching very fast. One of the topics that's going to be really important this year is IT operations are going to do more with less. But to do more with less, they need to use the enhanced power of AI. Not chat GPT that you've been hearing all about. No, embedded AI in AI ops, because that is going to be targeted at doing precisely what you want, saving the time and energy, helping people recover from tasks that they don't understand. So your staff shortages, your skill shortages, are all going to be addressed by using tools like AI ops. Beyond AI ops, you've also got to consider the energy and power management and DSIM is another topic that may not be top of mind it's something that 2007 2008 it was a big topic but it seems to have disappeared but guess what it's back because power is expensive power is in short supply people need to know where the power is how it's being used and how efficient it is nowadays data center stakeholders are looking to be more sustainable and more efficient that being said, there are different strategies that they are using. Let's start with building in a more sustainable way, in a modular way. So we are trying to reduce the waste and to optimize the resources in construction. In addition, we are trying to use more efficient equipment with a smaller footprint, because at the end of the day, being more sustainable, it is, it is translated to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So reducing more efficient IT equipment, more efficient data center physical infrastructure equipment like UPS, cooling, and new technologies. Let's mention, for example, liquid cooling. Liquid cooling is enabling to be more efficient in the operation. So we will be using less energy to process the same workload. And there are a lot of aspects about sustainability. We should also be considering circular economy, embodied carbon, life cycle assessment, and so on. But yes, the answer is definitely, we are an industry with high skilled people that we are looking to more efficient and more sustainable data centers and new technologies like liquid cooling, interacting with the grid, microgrid, fuel cells, and so on, we, are, we will be able to achieve that very soon. Sustainability has become a particularly important um, activity for co-location providers. And the big public providers like Digital Realty, Equinix, NTT, and Iron Mountain are rather advanced. I mean, everybody has a long way to go, but they're doing a good job and, and reporting their sustainability activity. The medium, smaller size co-location companies, they're really kind of just getting started, setting out their roadmaps and whatnot. But what's so critical about sustainability, not, I mean, above and beyond what we're doing for our environment, is that the demand for co-location services from uh, cloud companies is very, very high. 
but part of that demand is their requirement for certain sustainability activities for the co-location companies that they want to sign contracts with. So that's the most critical thing that's going on. But I would also share that sustainability and co-location is a super broader subject. And yesterday uh, at the DC Build um, portion of Data Center World, Chris Crosby from Compass Data Centers laid out what they've been doing. And Compass is not public, but they have done some amazing things in terms of data center sustainability. And you can look out for some reporting on what Chris told us about how Compass is addressing that. Reducing energy consumption is becoming a top priority for the data center operators, not just because of uh, the increasing energy cost, but it also uh, falls in line with their uh, sustainability goals. And if you look at the data center operations, there are a lot of areas where you can optimize the use of energy. One is uh, how do you cool the data center equipment? And uh, there are a lot of technologies uh, pioneered by the hyperscalers, uh, like using the external call there to uh, use the IT equipment. Then there is increasing adoption of uh, uh, liquid cooling technologies to cool down the IT gear. And uh, some large uh, data center operators go to the extent of optimizing highly optimized silicon and also scheduling their workloads when the energy demand outside is low uh, to, uh, to reduce the energy consumption and also to uh, reduce their energy bills and optimize their uh, energy utilization. It's been an exciting week here at Data Center World. We started off on Monday with the Omni Analyst Summit, uh, which had a strong focus on sustainability and looking at sustainability in practice, not just in concept, and looking at how that can actually help data center owners and operators not only increase efficiency, but also impact cost savings. Uh, so really looking at data centers as a force for good, but how to have that in a responsible way for the planet. Uh, and those are themes we've seen echoed at the show this week. So there's been a lot of conversation around new energy technologies as we continue to expand the data center industry around cooling technologies and liquid cooling, which is very much a hot topic on the floor. Um, and I would say the, the other big one is new workloads coming into the space. So this year's hot topic, generative AI, and kind of what the expectation is for increased workload in the data center space on the back of that. This is a good place to go because there's an interesting dynamic in the cloud business. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta build data centers. They lease a lot of co-location space, but they're known for big data center construction uh, programs. Right. right. But then, a lot of their competitors, IBM, Oracle, Salesforce, SAP, there's a long list of them, they typically lean on co-location. Yeah. And so... So if, why pay for real estate that you don't need? Or it might, might vary quite pretty dramatically. Exactly. But if my some of my biggest competitors, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and, and, and uh, uh, Meta, kind of a competitor, uh, are going into a particular market, then there's services to be sold to those tier two cloud service providers, and that's where co-location comes in. Right. So that's kind of the co-location market. On the cloud side, it's really different. They, if they need something in downtown Dallas or Chicago or New York, they're typically going to go co-location. And so Amazon local zones are a great example of that, you know, because they don't want to build in downtown New York, but it's a perfect place to use co-location for a local zone. Right. right. Otherwise, they're building out in the middle of nowhere. What kind of penetration are you seeing now in the SD-WAN market? So I think last few years have seen the biggest growth. Um, and as I said, during lockdown, uh, when many enterprises, right, a lot of corporations have to move to work from home. And since then we kind of stayed there. Right. You know, the, the, the hybrid workload, work mode um, is, is, is common. And with that, with this distributed workforce, um, the concept of, of SD1 has been absorbed way quicker. Mm. And, you know, there has been a few quarters now when we talk about, you know, um, uncertainty, recession, and you know how it, how is that affecting tech? Um, and speaking to SD1 vendors, they don't see an issue. Yeah, they still see uh, a lot of projects. Of course, lockdowns have affected you know maybe uh, schedule, um, but they still see huge growth. And uh, obviously, we, with now more conversation around security layers. Um, there is even more demand and even more deployment. And again, with 
growth of IoT, um, the, the SD1 is just the, just the easiest answer for, for companies to become more efficient, better, you know, increase the performance, um, and, and give that, you know, uh, proper digital transformation. Power was a really hot topic in there. Oh, no doubt. Particularly the debate between nuclear power. Oh, yeah. Uh, and having those small nuclear, um, I think there's three, less than 300 megawatts. Right. You, you have a fence. You don't need the permits. You don't need the... Uh, you don't need the huge enclosure, no. enclosure facility. Uh, you can put them, and the, the guy on the panel was saying, people in America would be surprised how much of the land is actually already allocated to that type of small oh, nuclear plant. No kidding. They, they probably don't know it, but, but a piece of land next to them, Probably the government has already said there's a permit if you want to build one for that. Oh. Sustainability is about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. But how can we achieve that? There are different strategies that nowadays data center stakeholders are targeting. For example, they are using more efficient IT equipment, more efficient physical infrastructure equipment like UPS, cooling systems. For example, new technologies nowadays, it's a driver for more sustainable data center. One technology that I would like to mention is liquid cooling. That will enable us to improve the effectiveness of how we use the energy. So if we use a liquid cooling, we can be more efficient. And at the end of the day, if we are reducing our energy consumption, we will be producing greenhouse emissions. But also we have to take into account other concepts about the circularity, circular economy, what it means, like how about recycling or trying to use a second life, giving second life to equipment. When I mean equipment, I mean IT equipment, namely servers, storage, networking, and also physical infrastructure, UPS, PDUs, RPPs, cooling system. And also another enabler for sustainability is automation, because we need to collect data and to collect data in real time to really understand what we are doing. The edge really is the need to put computing close to the end user device because the application is the the performance is dependent on the latest. Right. So the perfect example of the edge is whenever you use a server to support radio equipment, the latency is non-existent. It has right. to be zero, near zero. So from that perspective, you have to, you don't have a choice but to put the computing in the edge. Now, what people in, you know, cinemas, retail stores, shopping malls, right, hospitals, these are very mature environments where there would be multiple levels of edge computing. Computing, right? right? There might be some smart routers, there might be some computers, there might be some servers. Now, so the edge is kind of mature. The problem is that I think my clients as an analyst often think about what is the new opportunity at the edge. Now, the new opportunity at the edge, that is very different from what is the edge. The edge is a very mature environment and some of the edge is actually moving to the cloud. So right. the, the, the question is, how do you grasp the new equipment? Right. And I think there are a lot of new use cases. We see them all the time. But um, as analysts, we try to give very practical examples sure. of what are the immature parts of the edge that are maturing. And those exist. Um, but they're not, but, but broadly, edges, the edge is mature. Well, there's a lot of work that's being done with what are the right ways to create synthetic data sets. Mm. Um, and that way you can try to manage that bias um, and, and have it, but still have a data set that's useful for training. Uh, there's, I think, a lot of oversight and work that still needs to be done around the governance of AI sure. and ethical AI. And that's one of the things when our Omdia research team that specializes in this has a lot of focus on and attention on, especially now where we're seeing this significant leap forward in the capabilities. I think transparency can be a really key piece. As you said, right. a lot of those algorithms become black boxes because that's then the secret sauce right, for exactly. the company behind it. So it's kind of balancing that need and the, the you know understanding the commercial reality of the business with how do we make this as transparent as possible so right. that we've got confidence in what the AI is telling us, what the exactly. engine and the algorithm is telling us.